This is Ian from Lean Media, and today I'm going to talk about these offers you see on YouTube, talking about how it's so easy to make so much money doing retail arbitrage uh, on Amazon using Walmart or Costco or Target or some other big box store as a source. I'm going to explain why this is an extremely unlikely or impossible scenario, and also what Amazon states about doing retail arbitrage. And uh, before we get started, if this video helps you out, if you could like it and you could follow me, that would be great. Uh, but let's basically dive into it. These videos are very common on YouTube, and actually they cause a lot of problems for legitimate sellers, and I'll get into why that is later on. But the offers typically say, how I make $700 in one hour at Walmart, or this person made $1,400 in three hours at Costco uh, doing Amazon FBA retail arbitrage. This person's a little bit different. He's saying, Amazon online arbitrage. I'm not going to get into online arbitrage today, but I'll do another video on that. What I'm talking about here today is retail arbitrage. And retail arbitrage literally means going down to a store, buying some goods at a lower cost, and then turning around and selling them for a higher cost on Amazon. And at one time, it was possible to do this. It was very easy to do this. And I know this because I did it myself. Uh, I found this old, where is it? I found this these old emails from like 20 or, or 10 or 20 years ago where what I would do is I would go down to the local uh, CD shop. It was HMV in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I'd buy some of their import CDs that were on sale for like a dollar, and then I'd turn around and sell them for like $10 or $15 on Amazon. And it was totally okay to do this. Amazon let me create the listing. They were completely new. I never even opened them up, and I made, you know, I made a little bit of money here and there doing this type of thing, uh, starting in 2002 or 2003. And you can see some of the listings here. That dried up maybe five or 10 years ago because what started happening is Amazon started uh, make putting restrictions on doing retail arbitrage on its platform. Uh, and they did a couple other things as well. And I'm going to get into that right now. Now, if you're interested in doing retail arbitrage on Amazon, what you should do after you set up your Amazon Seller Central account you should go to Seller University. This is a free resource on Amazon, and it basically has all these videos and policies and explains exactly what Amazon expects from its sellers. Uh, you should know, understand what the policies are for sourcing items. And actually, there's one video called Guidelines to Source Products to Sell on Amazon. Um, let me see if I can bring it up a little bit here. And th th you can see what they say. They want you to source directly from the brand or from a legitimate wholesaler or um, distributor. And they have very specific things about, about this, you know, business license brand authorization letter. That means Amazon wants to make sure that the distributor or wholesaler is permitted by the brand to be reselling its stuff. So Amazon has some rules about this. And a lot of sellers have actually been tripped up by this when they see these get rich quick uh, schemes on on YouTube saying, oh, I can make $700 an hour buying cheap stuff on Walmart and then turning it around and reselling it on Amazon because that's not the way it works anymore. Uh, so one thing that they want, what Amazon wants, is they want to see legitimate invoices that you have, you're a permitted seller for this particular brand. Yes, it's possible to get these invoices. Yes, it's possible to set up a relationship with a wholesaler or a distributor or the brand itself. But that's not what is being promised here. What these guys are saying is you can show up at Walmart. Uh, you can have some app on your phone that shows what the price is on Amazon. And then you can compare it to what the, sh what the shelf price is on Walmart or Costco or Target or whatever. And if there's a difference, you can exploit that. You know, Buy a whole case of the stuff from Walmart, send it into Amazon FBA and start selling. And that's, that's not the way that it works. Uh, for most of the stuff that can be purchased on Amazon, even though a lot of people keep on th keep thinking that you can do it because they see these videos and they don't watch the Seller Central uh, video on Amazon Seller Central, the uh, sorry, the uh, Seller University. So Amazon lays out what they expect. Now, it, the other thing you should do besides looking at Seller University videos is you should go to the Amazon Seller Central forums, search for retail arbitrage, and then see the replies that come up. And you'll find that there's a lot of sellers have been burned by doing retail arbitrage. And what happens is other sellers, they say, oh, I, I bought some things from Walmart or Target and uh, Amazon shut my account down. Why is that? And then you'll get you'll get replies from people who know what they're talking about saying it's extremely risky. Amazon can ask for invoices or a letter 
of approval from the brand at any time, and this is correct. And a lot of people mistakenly think or they insist that, hey, I have an invoice. It's a receipt from Walmart. A receipt from Walmart is not an invoice. A receipt from Costco is not an invoice. A receipt from uh, Target.com is not an invoice. That just shows that you you purchase something from those sources. It doesn't mean you have permission to sell it. And by the way, a lot of brands, when they do sell something, they want to make – in order for the uh, – for their warranties to be honored, return policies, etc., it has to be an official source, such as the brand itself or wholesaler or distributor, which is what I was talking about earlier. But these folks show up on the Amazon Seller Central forums. They're newbies. They've watched some get-rich-quick scheme on YouTube, and they think that they can just start buying stuff down at the local CVS or uh, Target or Walmart and just start reselling on Amazon. And that's not the way it works. They get they get uh, they get flagged for it. Their listings get shut down and their accounts get shut down because they're not following policies. And then when they try to send in a, uh, a photocopy of the of the receipt from Walmart and Amazon rejects it, they're like, oh, what happened here? It's they did. And basically, they didn't understand the rules and they got burned. Um, this particular person also says maybe a better thing for you to do instead of trying to sell on Amazon FBA is to uh, sell the items on eBay. And that might be uh, that might be one option for them. Uh, one other thing that Amazon's been doing recently is – actually, not recently. It's been going on, I'd say, for, for five or six or seven years – is they restrict certain categories from, from having new sell- – you, you need permission to even sell in that category. This has happened for uh, media items, including CDs and DVDs. And basically, if you have like – let's say you buy some new CDs at, at Target and they're discounted. They're in the bargain bin and you try to sell them on Amazon. Amazon won't even let you get to that st- – get to that state. You have to have permission to even sell in that category. So topicals is another category like that. And I know that uh, I think like luxury watches, certain types of perfume. So there's all these restricted categories where you can't even get involved at all. And a lot of sellers that come on, they're saying, oh, wait a second. I thought it was so easy just to do retail arbitrage. Uh, no, it's not even possible to sell in that category, whether uh, you're doing buying it from Walmart or Target or whether you maybe you found like a, you know, an old an old gift that you got a couple of years ago and you want to turn around and resell it on Amazon. It doesn't work that way. So one thing I also wanted to talk a little bit about about these particular people, it's like, well, you know, what are they actually selling? Because if it was so easy to make $700 per hour or $1,400 in three hours, then obviously what you should be doing is hiring a bunch of people, uh, hiring 20 people to be going out to all the Wal- Walmarts and Costcos all over your state and just kind of scaling it up and making tons of money doing that. And how come they're not doing that? Well, the reason is, is because uh, I think I suspect most of the items, if they're a- if they're actually able su- to successfully do this, most of the items are unbranded junk or brands that haven't don't really understand what's going on with retail arbitrage. So they haven't caught on and they haven't uh, used a brand registry or other tools on Amazon to restrict their brands. Uh, The other thing that's happening is I don't think you can make that much money doing retail arbitrage, if anything at all, for the reasons I've already described. Most brands in many categories are now gated. Uh, The other reason is, is because the stuff that's left is mostly cheap, low value junk that's that's doesn't really have a big margin. And then also there just really aren't many opportunities because so many other people, this 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 particular vein has been played out over many particular years, over many years. Now, so how are they making money? Well, I actually looked into the person on top. Uh, this person has a bunch of kind of signups for different free newsletters and they want he, they want to, he wants to get your email address to start sending you messages about this or that. And actually they're come ons for his paid services. So he has a... Uh, reselling and community leads group, $100 per month. So that means you're paying $1,200 per year basically to talk with other people trying to scout around for uh, random stuff that might be sellable on on Amazon. And of course, you know, you're going to end up, if you're, if you're doing this type of thing where you're just talking with mostly other people and maybe this guy throws in a couple uh, pieces of advice here and there about how to do retail arbitrage on Amazon, uh, I, th- I think you're probably going to end up losing a lot of money. You're going to be wasting a lot of time. Uh, and this is just really uh, not a very good venture for people who are new sellers. Yes, you can make money on Amazon. Um, it usually involves lots of hard work. usually involves creating your own brand, investing in a business, investing in design, hiring a qualified supplier, uh, and not just some random person on Alibaba to to. Uh, to, to manufacture your particular item. So it's it's a hard slog. There's no easy way about it. Um, 
Amazon is pretty ruthless these days about shutting accounts down if they catch you violating policies. Many new sellers who see these YouTube videos about easy money, passive income, retail arbitrage, or what, what other other types of Amazon schemes. They don't even bother going to Seller University. They don't bother reading the policies. They don't know how they're going to get in trouble. And what usually ends up happening is their accounts don't last that long. They end up losing money on their investment, whether it's buying uh, cheap junk from some retail outlet or getting their account banned and they're, and they're sitting on a whole load of inventory. And that's really not a way to make a successful Amazon business. My name is Ian Lamont. I am the founder of Lean Media. If you could like this video, if it helped you out or follow me, that'd be great. I have usually two videos every week about doing business on Amazon the right way, including using programs like Amazon Seller Central, Amazon Transparency, Amazon Advertising, Amazon Brand Registry, Amazon KDP, as well as other platforms such as Shopify. Uh, if you go to leamedia.org, click on blog or video, you can see lots more free blog posts and videos. I don't have any sort of masterclass or anything like that. There's just I'm trying to help other people out and also steer people away from bad ideas for uh, easy money on Amazon because most ways of making easy money on Amazon, those, those, uh, those particular doors have been closed a long time ago. Thanks so much for watching.